you deserve to have your boundaries honored. But that starts with you deciding that you deserve to have your boundaries honored. And I think when we notice that we keep entertaining places where people aren't honoring boundaries, that's actually a reflection of us, not as much as it's a reflection of them. friends, we are still in the gap. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, this kind of the, the moral of the story is the gap is a place where you really just have to find a cozy little resting spot to allow the transformation to occur when you're on this journey of leaving one identity. You know you aren't that same person that you were six months or a year ago, and you can see where you're going but you're in this middle part where you're still integrating a lot of the lessons, a lot of the things you need to learn and unlearn in order to fully embody that version. And I think what's so interesting about the gap is the part that I always wanted to rush through was this middle part. I wanted to rush to the end goal, but I didn't take the time to fully sit in the gap long enough to let the lessons and the things I was learning and unlearning kind of like sink in at a cellular level. I almost imagine like when it rains and when it's like a really heavy rain, that moisture takes a while to soak into the soil and make it more fertile, more ready for new growth. And that's kind of what's happening in this season. But I want to talk about a really important element that came through in a lot of the questions that you submitted. Those of you in our text community who answered my call for questions about the gap, And it revolves around this theme of why boundaries are so important, especially in a gap. Boundaries are important always. I think boundaries are a love language. And it's also a place where we can really quickly see where some of the, it's like some of the old patterns really have a hard time going and saying goodbye. Boundaries and my inability to hold boundaries and reinforce them often show me it's like pointing to a deeper root belief about myself, a deeper root belief about other people and my relationships that once the boundary is in place and once I do that inner work to really stand strong in it, it often reveals what relationships are meant for me and going to come with me into this next chapter and those that aren't. So if you're someone who, I know we just talked in the last episode about outgrowing relationships. If you're in a place where you're like, gosh, I just don't know, is this a relationship that is supposed to come with me into the next season? A lot of times setting a boundary and noticing how another person interacts with that boundary is a really very clarifying experience. If you can be grounded in why the boundary is important and why it's necessary in order to reinforce this new direction that you're going in, and you can hold to it no matter how uncomfortable it makes other people around you, no matter how uncomfortable it makes you. I mean, I feel like I'm usually the one that's the most uncomfortable with a new boundary until I have a little bit more time and experience really holding to it. So I want to talk a little bit about why boundaries are so important in this season. And then we're going to get to some questions that more or less really touch on this theme of of where boundaries come into play. So, you know, in this gap season, it is a season of transformation. If you're in the gap, it means that you're ready for more. It's be, it means you're being called toward more. And the intensity of the gap, the length of the gap is really going to be determined by the level of transformation that you're calling in. So if you're like in it and it is really uncomfortable and you are shedding some big things and you're having to set some pretty big boundaries because you realize you went way too far or were way too relaxed on things that actually do matter to you. This is going to feel intense, but it's also going to call in the level of transformation that's equivalent to the level you're willing to withstand this discomfort right now. And I think boundaries, like I said, are a love language. They are an act of love, not just for you, but for other people around you. And I, there's that quote that, you know, flies around the internet, something about 
the only people who really have a problem with our boundaries are the people who really benefited from us not having any. And that's easy to say and throw around and kind of have this like, mm, yeah, like you should, you should just be okay with my boundaries. But the truth is it starts with us. The reason even why people don't respect boundaries is because we have taught them it's okay to not respect boundaries. And we often have the hardest time, we meaning, I'm just going to make this personal, I often have the hardest time with boundaries that I set for myself, ones that are just personal. They actually don't have anything to do with anyone else. So yeah, it's easy to like throw around these cliches about boundaries, but the truth is it starts within, it's, it's actually all an inside job, and then you get to see how other people respond to those boundaries and whether they really support you and support themselves to work within that. I think it's just important to realize that it's actually not loving to remain in patterns that aren't good for you. They harm you and they enable other people. They harm you emotionally, sometimes physically. You know, it's not an act of love to be wishy-washy on a boundary that is really important for you to thrive and for you to throw to, I almost said throw up, for you to throw up and show up as the highest version of yourself. And that's so much easier said than done. And I think I've realized for myself how, especially in this gap season, learning a a lot of lessons about my self-worth, my boundaries have completely been a reflection of my self-worth. And what I mean by that is in areas where I have pretty high self-worth, I actually have really clear boundaries that I hold with no issues whatsoever and in love, like with such a sense of love. And then in places where I realize, oh, wow, my self-worth was really kind of tied up in how someone else was responding to me or in this dynamic, my boundaries aren't as firm. So I think it's it just keeps coming back to this lesson that if we're willing to see all of this, everything that happens in the gap as a reflection of where we have some really big opportunity for growth, then even boundaries and where you struggle with them can show you and just point this neon sign to where you have a huge opportunity for growth if you're willing to step into it. So boundaries for myself have really been a reflection of my self-worth. And I wrote this down. This was one of those 2 a.m. thoughts when I, we talked, I think we talked in another episode about, or maybe been the fear, the fear episode where we talked about the 2 a.m. anxiety thoughts. So one of my 2 a.m. thoughts, it wasn't anxiety driven, but I was thinking about this episode. This is what my 2 a.m. self wrote down, that you can have boundaries and not have self-worth. Like it's actually possible that your self-worth isn't really where you want it to be. And you can set a boundary and maybe that'll work and maybe it won't. But I don't actually think you can have true and deep self-worth, like an actual connection to your own worthiness and not have boundaries. I mean, sometimes my 2 a.m. self is really smart. I don't know. Sometimes she has like a lot of panic and a lot of really, really anxious thoughts. But this 2 a.m. self had a lot to say about boundaries. And that's actually pretty deep. You know, it's just like it's so clear you can have boundaries and not have your self-worth be really high. But if your self-worth is really high, you will have boundaries. They might not even occur as boundaries because it's just how you operate, because you know that what you want and need and and the kind of relationships that you desire, that you deserve them. That's essentially what self-worth really is. So for me, it's been a season of realizing that as I work on my self-worth, the boundaries that I need to set really show themselves, they reveal themselves. And as I set and really work on energetically grounding myself in my ability to hold to that boundary, the people, the opportunities, the even like the parts of my business that actually just don't fit with this new context I'm creating, it reveals itself pretty quickly. And then it makes it a situation where I I now get to step into the uncomfortable action of you know, ending a relationship or moving on from something that actually just doesn't honor my boundaries as I've grown in my self-worth. So it's important to say before we really dive into these questions that you deserve to have your boundaries honored. But that starts with you deciding that you deserve to have your boundaries honored. 
And I think when when we notice that we keep entertaining places where people aren't honoring boundaries, that's actually a reflection of us, not as much as it's a reflection of them. It's more a reflection of how we view ourselves and whether we're willing to sometimes make the harder decision, which is to go no contact or completely walk away from a situation where boundaries aren't being upheld, but you deserve to have your boundaries and your needs met. But it starts with you deciding that. So let's dive into some of these questions because I think there's so many cool little nuances to what boundaries really reveal and where they're appropriate. When I was thinking about how I've really used boundaries during this gap season, I've used them as ways to reinforce how I'm committed to showing up in this new season. So boundaries could be around habits. They could It could be around creating accountability with people who I know will hold me to these new habits. It's also a way to reinforce what you won't tolerate anymore. And I think that's a really important one, as especially as you grow in the self-worth journey and you realize there's just certain ways of being interacted with in your personal life or really in your business as well, where it's not okay with you if people don't abide by contracts. It's not okay with you if they contact you out of business hours. It's, it actually just doesn't work for you. So it's a way to really reinforce what you will and won't tolerate. And boundaries really are only as good as our willingness to uphold them. So when we think about boundaries, you guys had some amazing questions that really tie into this. And I'm going to dive into the first one that was submitted by Klein Leonard. I love her. One of my fellow Midwest girls. Klein said, I've done the work to regulate my nervous system, but I have friends that haven't. I love them, but it can be really stressful to be around them for long periods of time. I feel you, okay? (laughs) Whether it's friends, family, or just people in the grocery store who are really unregulated, especially when you're new on this journey of regulating yourself, it can feel really intense to be in energy that reminds you of the energy you just really kind of worked to remove from your personal little bubble. So our question is, how do you navigate distancing yourself from outgrown friendships? And if you need space, how do you tell them why? Do you kind of just go without telling them? Do you set a boundary? Do you have to explain? And I love this. It's kind of like another layer of what we already talked about with outgrowing relationships. But this is one where I want to kind of talk of the nuance of maybe people that you do want to keep in your life. You don't want to completely outgrow that relationship. It's kind of that gray area of, well, let's see if if this relationship can actually work within this new energetic framework that I'm creating for myself, you know, especially if you're working really hard to regulate your nervous system. And then you go back into environments where, you know, I'm thinking specifically of family, let's say that like family dynamics, which are so ingrained in, you know, why we're wired the way that we're wired, it can really start to trigger those old patterns again. So maybe for a time, it's actually in your best interest to limit the amount of time that you're going back into those environments. So what I'm saying is you might find that in the beginning, as you are really regulating your nervous system and you're kind of still working to find your home in this new energetic balance, you might need more boundaries in place. Whereas as these you know, new ways of operating. And and just as you heal more, you might find that you can dip into environments that normally used to trigger you and they just don't as much anymore. But I think that it's a, it's a really important awareness to say like, wow, now that I've regulated my nervous system, I realize that when I'm around certain people, I don't feel the way I want to feel. And I think it can kind of go one of two ways. For me, it typically starts by just kind of naturally distancing myself not really needing to have a big conversation about it unless it's a place where like, let's say it's an office environment and you realize it's not healthy for you to walk, work in that office anymore. You probably need to have a conversation with people to renegotiate that agreement. But if it's, you know, friendships or if it's things where you you just start to realize, gosh, what we used to hang out and do, like, let's say we used to drink wine and watch The Bachelor and gossip about people. And you're like, yeah, that just doesn't really fit the person I want to become. And you start to distance yourself. At some point, you might find that it's more awkward to just not have the conversation than it is to say, hey, I have really been working on myself and I realize there's some things I really want to change. And in order to do that, it's going to require me to, to just adopt some new habits. And I realize that like, 
I don't know how you guys feel, but for me, when we're in these environments and when we're like gossiping about people or, you know, drinking wine five nights a week, I actually don't feel as good. So you might notice me just choosing to do different things. It's not about you. It's because I am really working on how I want to feel and creating the life I want to live. If anyone, you know, is interested in catching a workout with me after work instead of, you know, going to the bar, hey, I'd love to connect in that way. And I think when we when we are able to just it's almost like advocate for ourselves and what we need and let people know, hey, this actually isn't about you. You might feel that there was this energy shift. It has less to do with you and you didn't do anything wrong. I'm just choosing something different for me. And here are the things that like I want to connect over now in this new season. And if you also want to connect in those ways, amazing. Here's where you can find me. Here's the workout class you can find me at. Or let me know if you're up for a Saturday morning walk that we can get up bright and early for because we weren't staying out all night on Friday. And I think just knowing that that's going to kind of like we talked about in the episode about outgrowing relationships, you changing is going to shine a light for some people on why they're not changing And it might trigger some stuff for them, like feeling judged by you or you saying that, okay, well, you're not drinking anymore. And people can make that mean that you're judging them for drinking. Just allow yourself to be misunderstood. You don't really have to over explain yourself other than to say, I want something better for my life. And here's what that looks like. And I love you. I just realized like I've got to change some habits and I've got to change the energy that I'm around if I really I'm going to step into the person I know I'm meant to be. And kind of like I was saying in the beginning, I think when we set those boundaries, notice how people respond to them. And that's usually an indicator of how much energy to continue investing in that relationship. And that's so hard. I wish I could say that that was easy and just, you know, cut people out. Listen, again, I'm from the Midwest, client you are too. So it's easier said than done because we don't actually see this modeled in you know, especially in cultures and in places in the U.S. where it almost like goes against the cultural norm to grow and to evolve and to allow your relationships to evolve along with your personal evolution. You're going to feel like a weirdo. You might even be called things behind your back. But I know that you also have started to cultivate the environment of people who are going to champion your growth. And anyone out there who's listening to this who's like, yeah, I feel really seen no one around me is championing my boundaries. So then it makes me wonder, like, am, is there something wrong with me? Am I a bad person? Just know that there are others out there who will champion your boundaries once you really commit to them and commit to finding new communities where, you know, powerhouse women, that's exactly why it exists. Find people who are on the same path and are going to normalize the process that you're going through because it can be tough. And setting boundaries can be like the onset of that loneliness feeling that can come with the gap. But it also makes things really, really clear. And there is just beauty in that clarity of understanding who is and is not meant to be on this next part of the journey with you. I feel like Shauna's question, um, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I'm not even gonna attempt it. It starts with an H. And Shauna really was kind of like adding to this question that is is kind of now talking about like some of our more intimate relationships with say like a spouse or a partner. This could even come down to like family, just the people who are really close to you. And her first question is, what are some tips to overcome old habits, stay the course of stepping into the best me, but then how do you set and hold boundaries with someone like a spouse or a partner, someone who's really close to you, who maybe they say they support you, but their actions are contradictory. And I think this kind of goes back to what I was saying to the previous question of, you know, setting the boundary. I think the first thing to do is ground yourself in the fact that the boundary is actually an act of love for you and for the other person. And if I'm going to speak like just really openly about like even in my closest relationships, the hardest ones to set boundaries, when I actually stepped back and looked at it, not having the boundary was enabling behaviors that didn't actually work. They weren't the best for either one of us. So I think what stopped me from setting certain boundaries in the beginning was thinking that, you know, I was being selfish or this was only good for me or I was judging the other person. And it was really when I stepped back and I realized, well, 
by not setting the boundary, I was enabling myself to be in certain patterns that just weren't working for, for us. And then it also enabled the other person to keep showing up in a way that wasn't working for them either. So I think looking through that lens and then you know, having really open conversations. And this is going to depend on, you know, in this specific example, how open you can be with your partner to say, hey, I've noticed that we had a couple of conversations about, you know, this boundary, whatever it is. And, you know, I hear you when you say you support me. And then what I experience in return is, is X. And sometimes it's a matter of, you have a certain expectation of how them showing up and supporting you looks like And it's not meeting that expectation, but then it's, I always bring it back to myself. Like, have I not been clear? Maybe I didn't clarify what someone supporting me in this boundary looks and feels like. And then when I communicate that expectation, this is like, you know, ninja communication in relationships 101. No one can meet needs or honor boundaries that we don't communicate. And they can't honor them in the exact way we want them to be honored if we don't communicate what that looks like, because their interpretation of it might be completely different. So to say like, hey, here's what it looks like to honor me in that boundary, does that work for you? The third piece is you can't just impose the expectation of someone to honor your boundaries on them. It does happen in conversation, especially in like a really intimate partnership or someone who's really, really close, especially someone that you like live with and you share physical space with, it's got to be grounded in communication and mutual buy-in. And if the other person is like, no, that doesn't work for me, then that's actually just a bigger conversation. Now you really can't be upset. I mean, you're allowed to have your feelings, of course, but if the other person is saying, no, I can't meet you there, or sometimes they're saying that by their actions, unfortunately, you know, if you step back and you just look at what's happening, and you can look at it through a neutral lens of, of, of realizing, okay, I have communicated the boundary. I've asked for buy-in. If that person said yes and then still continued to not honor the boundary, that's one conversation. But if they said no or if they never agreed to it, it's so easy then for us to project the anger or the frustration or the resentment on the other person when it gives me the most power if I come back to myself and I say, well, Did I actually communicate my needs in a way that was effective? I can't expect someone to meet my needs if I haven't communicated them. And then I think the other piece is enroll people in why. You know, so often, and I've been a part of this dynamic in all different relationships in my life, with family, with, you know, with partners, with friends, where, you know, I'm feeling this desire to grow and What that can sometimes trigger in myself and others is this fear, are you going to outgrow me? Are you going to outgrow this friendship? And the truth is we never know, but we also really have to honor that pull within us to grow. And I think it's really the most empowering place to come from when communicating our boundaries to also ground it in why. I, I want more for us. I want more for my life. I'm honoring what feels true and authentic to me in going in this direction. And I want you to know that I love you and here's why I value our relationship. And this by no means is me trying to outgrow you, but me not listening to this pull that I have to to grow myself is actually me betraying me. And if that goes on for too long, my fear is that I'm going to start to resent you for it when that's That's me that didn't step into that growth. You know, it's so nuanced. It can feel so messy. But the truth is that if you are honoring the knowing inside you that you're meant for more and you're meant to grow and you're communicating with love for the other person and you're not expecting them to grow at your pace or to grow in the same way as you, but you also communicate that, you know, your desire is to grow together, but you can't control whether or not they grow with you, then over time, again, those dynamics will reveal themselves. And I think that's the part we're really afraid to admit. I think that's the part I was always afraid to admit admit, is that my deepest fear was that I would start to outgrow the people I love the most. And I don't think it's so much ever a question or a conversation of outgrowing people completely, but there is there is a real dynamic of, you know, does your growth is your growth happening on parallel paths? And 
no one really wants to face that reality that maybe it's not. But at the end of the day, to not honor that call within yourself to grow is a form of self-abandonment. And that's just always going to feel like shit. So it's really the choice between, am I going to put my own needs and my own my own purpose, my own, like why I'm here on this planet, am I gonna prioritize that or am I gonna prioritize other people's comfort with my growth? And you can kind of already hear which one is coming from the authentic place and which one is coming from fear. And I feel like this question, and I'm just so grateful for it. First of all, like just honoring you for just the, the vulnerability to share this question and the willingness to put this out there. Cause I actually think this dynamic is more present than a lot of people are willing and comfortable talking about. But I feel like Katie's question, the last one for today, Katie Wilson has a similar question, but from a different angle. And I love this. Your heart is so beautiful, Katie, because her question was, what practices of love, compassion, and grace do you use for yourself and others? Boundaries are helpful, but I struggle with really being loving and patient both with myself and with my spouse throughout this growth journey. And she's bringing up a dynamic where a little bit different than the, the last question that I think is also important to talk about. She said, I, I don't always want to talk about my growth and I also don't want to take on others insecurities about my growth. I just want to be oh, this is going to make me cry. I feel like this is how we all feel. I just want to be loved, supported, and trusted. I still deeply love my family, but my journey right now is learning to deeply love myself. And I feel like that just like hits home uh, about what boundaries are really doing. And I think the heartbreaking part of having to hold boundaries and learn to do that with grace is when we realize that the boundary is going to start to create separation in a relationship where you didn't intend to create separation, that was just a natural fallout of you really honoring yourself and loving yourself. And so I think where the grace and compassion comes, there's actually what's been so beautiful for me in this season is that as I've been on this journey and as I'm bumping up against these same questions, I mean, every, every single question that I've read from all of you are questions that I have sat with myself in some way, shape or form. And this one about like grounding yourself in compassion and grace has been a really big lesson in this season. And I think number one, in order to actually get to compassion and grace and love, I had to honor the very real feelings that didn't feel like that at all. So I don't think we can bypass anger, resentment, frustration, both anger with ourselves, anger with other people. Maybe there's anger around boundaries that have gone unrespected or disrespected for years. I, I don't think you can actually ground yourself in compassion and grace unless you're willing to go through the darker emotions in order to get there in an authentic place. So allow yourself to feel any anger, you know, find healthy ways to process through that. Find healthy ways to support yourself, you know, therapy, a friend, an outlet where you have a safe place to express anything that feels other than loving. Because on the other side of allowing ourselves to have that real human experience and process through the emotions that actually kind of you know, they get stored in our cells, it's much easier to come to grace and compassion and love. And once I, so I wanna start by saying that, once I allowed myself to lean into some of those emotions that I was quite honestly, like really afraid of. I was afraid to feel anger. I was afraid to express the emotion that came along with it and just like the, the feelings and what it felt like in my body. And as I did, as I cleared a lot of that energy that was really just kind of stuck in there, I didn't even know what I was angry about. Then it, it was interesting to notice how the right podcast, the right mentor, the right book, the right framework that helped me ground myself back into what I know is authentic for me, which is coming from love, coming from grace, coming from compassion, like endless compassion. But my compassion wasn't authentic before because I only wanted to feel the compassion. I didn't want to feel the anger that was also very real. So for me, I think that was for someone, it may or may not have been the direct answer to Katie's question, but there was a, a book that came 
across my radar that has been really big for me in this season. And it's interesting. I think I love to watch how certain people and books will come into my life in one season and I'm not really ready for them. So I bought this book years ago and I ended up donating it, you know, when we, one of our moves and I, cause I never read it. And then it came back around and I remember I went searching for the book so mad that I donated it, but I, I downloaded the audible version again and, and it was exactly what I needed to hear in that moment. And it's a book by Byron Katie and it's called loving what is and what loving what is has helped me do. You can also just like look up her videos on YouTube. She has a lot of content, has a podcast. But what it is, is it's, it's this framework to really self-assess and really question our thoughts because our thoughts and the way we perceive other people, the way that we're, it's like the way we fight against what is, is actually the source of all of our suffering. So, you know, wishing someone were another way. Well, I'm the one causing me suffering by not just loving what is, loving the current reality. And it's like my frustration, this tug of war with wanting to change it, that actually is the root of my suffering. And the suffering is what I'm trying to alleviate. I just think that the answer to my suffering ending is this person changing when it's not, because that's me giving away my power, handing over my power to like, if you would just change, then I could be happy. And you can hear in that, that that's not how it works. I'm happy. I'm the source of my happiness. I'm also the source of my anything, the opposite of happiness, right? I'm the source of my suffering. So Loving What Is by Byron Katie or just looking up her work in general was really, really powerful. And then I think the other piece of it is just open communication. Again, to the extent that you're able to with this loved one in your life, explaining the why, even just explaining. And I think what I hear in Katie's question is, Almost there's been these seasons where like, I don't even really know how to explain what I'm what I'm learning about myself. I, I actually just responded to a, a text from a friend before we started filming. And I was and the friend was like, hey, I sent you a text checking in. And I realized it was one of those like I thought I responded, but I didn't actually respond. But then the honest response was, hey, quite honestly, right now, the simple question of someone saying, how are you is actually such a hard question to answer because it changes. And I, I don't actually even sometimes know how I am because I'm just feeling a lot. And so just being really honest to the extent that you're able and willing, being really honest about, especially if you're not okay. And if you're processing some really big things and if you just need space, I think a lot of people are willing and so endlessly willing to give us space and time to process. If we just communicate, hey, I'm processing some really big things right now. And maybe you've even picked up on that in my energy. I just want you to know, like, it's, I am okay. It's not about you. I'm just really sitting with some big emotions. And I, I would love to talk about it when I'm ready. I'm not ready to talk about it yet. And I think giving ourselves kind of like that in-between version of what open communication looks like, that we don't necessarily always even know how to explain what we're going through or, or what we need. We don't even know how to ask for that. And just giving yourself permission to say, I'm sitting with some big things right now and I, I don't even really know how to explain it, but I want you to know I love you and that when I'm ready to talk, I, I will reach out. And just letting that be okay, that sometimes that's the boundary I need to set is I want to be honest, you know, life isn't all sunshine and rainbows right now, but I also am not ready to talk about it. So just letting you know I'm kind of in it and it means the world that you checked in and I may not have a lot to share and contribute back in this moment, but I do love you. And when I'm ready to share, I will reach out. And that has been a new practice for me because it doesn't feel authentic to just pretend I'm, I'm okay right now. A lot of days I haven't been okay. And I've just been sitting with some really big transitions and emotions. But I also don't feel ready, nor do I feel I owe anybody an explanation until I am ready to process with people. And that has really worked for me. So, you know, just know that most of us will start to sense where we need to set a boundary. And then I want you to just notice what fear, what doubt, what patterns of thought show up in the aftermath of the realization. When you realize, gosh, I think I need to have this conversation, this really direct conversation or set this boundary or just communicate to friends, hey, I'm just going to be a little bit less available. I'm I'm in a cocoon season right now. I'm I'm healing. 
And just let that be okay that it might feel uncomfortable to do so, but it might also be the access to the deeper healing that you really want to do. So I'm still learning about this. I'm sure we'll talk a lot more about this. Boundaries are just like such a deep and nuanced topic, and they've been a huge part of my healing journey. And it sounds like for a lot of you as well. So if nothing else, I want you to take away from this that you don't need my permission, but if you need someone to expand you in the area of boundaries and remind you that you do deserve to have your boundaries honored, but you can't expect someone to honor a boundary that you aren't communicating, that you aren't honoring yourself, and that at the end of the day, boundaries really are an act of self-love. And they're an act of love for the people around you, even though those people around you might not see it or feel it that way. It really is. And if you're setting boundaries right now and you're meeting yourself in the midst of whatever your relationship is with boundaries, especially if it's one that you're like, wow, I just really have a hard time setting them and holding to them, that I just love you so much. And I'm so proud of your strength and your courage to go down this road because I know for myself just how transformative it has really been.